Well, good morning, beloved, and happy Tuesday. We've been spending these uh, last several days on a learning curve to be able to learn to distinguish the voice of the Lord because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. And so it's so important for us as followers of Jesus Christ to be able to discern and recognize his voice. And we've been learning that. Yesterday we talked about the four D's, to desire this, to determine, to learn, to do this, to be able to discern, to understand, and then to obey, and then to, to do. Well, part of that discernment has to do with the three lights. I like to call them the three lights. And that first light, the primary light, is the Word of God, the Bible. God <clears throat> speaks from His Word. And so uh, that first light, you're faced with a decision. Well, you, you don't just go and try to find a verse, because you can find a verse in the Bible to do just about anything you want. And you've got to determine between God's will and your will what He wants and, uh, as uh uh, different from probably what you want and the timing of it and so you can't just go looking for a verse you should be on a regular reading the Bible plan if you need one go to our website fbcfbg.com and you'll find one or you can find them online but have a regular Bible reading plan so that when you are faced with a decision and you're trying to discern, go back and take a look from your journal some things that have been repeated over several weeks, even several months. As you have been reading through the Bible, the Lord will highlight various things in your reading plan and you underline those, go back in your Bible and see what you have been underlining and, and that will give you some direction. That's the primary light. The second light is what I call godly counsel. Have some, have some godly counselors in your life, people that you know trust you and love you and have your best interest in mind, spiritual interest. Because you can have uh, friends that will just uh, agree with you with well, however you present it, the, the situation, you can tell I'm kind of leaning this way or that way and they'll just, kind of like Nathan did to King David, when David said I want to build God a temple Nathan said do it <laughs> but then the Lord spoke to him later and said no go back and tell David I will do that you won't and so godly counsel, here's how you can recognize as you share with somebody that you trust as a godly counselor they should say this first. What impressions have you had from your daily Bible reading? What have you been hearing God say in the Bible? And they will hear that as along with what you're faced. And then for sure, they should say, here's how you can recognize a godly counselor. Give me some time to pray about this with you. And, uh, and I will spend some time praying uh, before we uh, get back together and talk about it some more. Godly counsel, the second light. And then the, the third light, that inner voice of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And the, once again, you rely upon your spiritual journal as to what the Lord has, has been impressing you with uh, bits and pieces over several weeks, several months even, and there'll be a consistency there. These three lights come together to reveal the will of God. And that, again, that primary one, God's word. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That means it comes from inside. The word of God that dwells in you will shine forth with these three lights lining up for confirmation that this is the will of God. Then the prayer, God, be my courage to do it for your glory. 
Amen. Let's pray together. And our Father in heaven, God, there is no one like you, for no one loves us the way that you do. Thank you, God. We recognize you as God and give you thanks. And thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross. And we confess to you, we don't even begin to have a clue as to the depth and the reach and the outcome of the great salvation that you have provided for us. And we give you thanks, God. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our teacher, our guide, our constant companion. You live in us and are, are more desirous that we walk in your will than we are. Thank you, God. Thank you. And we pray right now for wisdom as, as uh, stores are starting to open up, whether we should go or stay, churches, how we should open, when, and whether we should go or stay, continue. And there's just so many unknowns, but we know you, God, and we desire to know you more and more. Not so much to know what to do, but to know what you are doing in us and with us and through us and as us before you, Father, and the watching world around us. Thank you. We have great rest and confidence in that. And we pray against this virus. We pray for the suffering to end. We pray for the comfort for those who have lost loved ones, Lord, and healing and wisdom for everyone that's involved. And Lord, bring about a great revival. So much is being planted online with good Bible teaching and preaching. There's a great harvest coming as a result of so much planting during these days. Thank you, God. Bring it. Bring it for your glory is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and hallelujah.